How's it going guys, Zeta here. So a few days ago I made a report regarding of the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now this information came from Moore's Law is Dead. He revealed and leaked related towards the specs for the PlayStation 5 Pro. Tom Henderson afterwards replied and you know written his own article and he made a report of his own saying that the leaks and the specs regarding of the PS5 Pro are real. So after I made the video, a few days later, we actually got some few extra follow-ups. I definitely want to go through them. So exclusive, more PlayStation 5 Pro specs details came from Tom Henderson. We got some extra information of, uh, well, actually pretty awesome. In fact, that we got extra information that what we should expect from the PlayStation 5 Pro. Following this week's leaks on the PlayStation 5 Pro GPU specs and performance targets, Insider Gaming has learned more PlayStation 5 Pro specs. For comparison's sake, we also included the specification for the standard PlayStation 5. So we're getting into the system memory. So the standard PlayStation 5 contains 448 GB uh, or you know like 14 GTS, and then they we're getting into the PlayStation 5 Pro. It contains 576 GB or uh, 18 uh, GTS a 28% increase over the standard console. Also outlined is that the PlayStation 5 Pro system memory is more efficient than the standard console. So the bandwidth gain may increase by over 28%, quite a significant margin. CPU. Now the CPU is identical to the standard of the PlayStation 5. However, the Pro has the high CPU frequency mode, which takes the CPU to 3.85 GHz a 10% increase over the standard console. In high CPU frequency mode, more power is allocated to the CPU and will downclock the GPU by around 1.5%, resulting in roughly 1% lower GPU performance. Now, if we have to argue and say by the comparison of all the things that we've heard from the specs on the PS5 Pro, CPU actually, well, it seems like it's gonna be getting, well, the least amount of the improvements. Now, I kind of understand the reasoning. I think it might be because of the backwards compatibility. And of course, of course, if you make the significant jump or improvements, they may result of some issues. Nevertheless, I'm a tiny bit disappointed to hear that CPU is not really much getting of an improvement. Of the other things that are, well, significant improvements that we see, well, that, those things are awesome. Now we're getting into the audio side. The ACV in the PlayStation 5 Pro runs at the higher clock speed over the standard PlayStation 5, resulting at the ACM library having 35% more performance. More convolution reverbs can be processed. More FFT or IFT can be processed. In the article, it's getting into the GPU previously revealed information, such as rendering 45% faster than the PS5, two to three times, ray tracing even four times in some cases, 33.5 teraflops, PSSR, PlayStation Spectral super, uh, super, super Resolution Upscaling, I've actually got some extra information relating to that as well, Upscaling and the Aliasing uh, Solution, Supporting for the resolution up to 8K is planned for the future SDK version, Custom Machine Learning Architecture, AI Accelerator, Supporting 300 tops of 8-bit computation, 67 teraflops at, of 16-bit floating point. In addition of the 30 WGPs running specialized of BVH8 traversal shader versus 18 WGPs running BVH4 transversal shader on the standard of the PlayStation 5. It also understood that the means to make the PlayStation 5 Pro as a competitive, not by phrasing here, as possible. It will have a detachable disk drive, which will be identical to the latest iteration of the standard of the PlayStation 5 and a 1TB of the storage space. Currently, the PlayStation 5 Pro is running on the SKD 9.0, and SKD 10.0 is expected in the fall of 2024, which is the current target releasing date on the console. So presumably, will be somewhere around September's uh, month. Nevertheless, it could also get pushed to like October, but we do not know yet. And remember, since there are no first-party releases that have contained big games, there is still the possibility that this console may get delayed. I'm kind of doubting it that we could see something like that, but still, I don't think that it will actually happen. I do think that this console will release. Now, afterwards, a few hours later, even to a day later, uh, Tom Henderson written yet an additional article related to the PS5's Pro information. So here's the article, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR, is aiming for 4K 120fps and 8K 60fps. 
PlayStation New Spectral Super Resolution PSSR, which will be first be integrated into the PlayStation 5 Pro, is internally aimed for 4K 120fps and 8K 60fps. Console gaming, insider gaming has learned. The news comes following this week's leaks of the PlayStation 5 Pro, which revealed that the PlayStation 5 Pro, codenamed Trinity, will be incorporating PSSSR to upscale to higher resolution. Currently, the PSSSR work on SKD 9.0 in the PlayStation 5 Pro to bring 4K resolutions. Insider Gaming has also revealed more spef specifications on the upcoming PlayStation 5 Pro, which you can read here, and he just basically transitions this site into his older uh, articles that I have already gone through. Outlined in the document provided in the Insider Gaming under the condition that they are not made public, PlayStation ambitious with the PSSR is to achieve 4K 120fps and 8K 60fps. Whilst these are not the targets for the PS5 Pro due to hardware limitations, it is internal goals for the PSSR in future console interactions. The PlayStation 5 Pro PSSR currently supports 3840 by 2160 and is currently aiming for the 4K 60fps and 8K 30fps, but it's unclear if those internal milestones can be passed. PSSR memory requirements is roughly 250 uh, megabytes, 180 megabytes from the PSML library and 68 megabytes from the game. Two cases studies for the two unnamed first party games include such as the game one we're getting into the target, image quality close to fidelity mode or 1800p with performance mode of FPS of 60 FPS. Standard PlayStation 5 with such as the options that you have performance mode 1080 at the 60 FPS, fidelity mode 1800p at 30 FPS. Now the PlayStation 5 Pro 1440p at 60 FPS PSSR used. Then we're getting into the game two. Target, add ray tracing to gameplay. Standard PlayStation 5 achieves 60 FPS without ray tracing, and PlayStation 5 Pro achieves 60 FPS with ray tracing. And that's pretty much it. This was all the information related towards the PlayStation 5 Pro. This is pretty exciting. I cannot wait to see what they got in store related in terms of what can, what can actually be improved in the existing games that did not yet receive that sort of a patch availability for this PlayStation 5 Pro. And I'm also curious to see what for the games that do exist that would receive the patch. And another thing, what about the future games, such as the big game that really, really depends on the console seller? I am talking about Grand Theft Auto 6. What if, just, just humor me for a second, Grand Theft Auto 6 will be available to be played with 60 FPS on PlayStation 5 Pro. Man, that would be a very big game changer. A lot more people will actually end up purchasing a PlayStation 5 Pro just specifically that they can play their favorite game on the PlayStation 5 Pro with the 60 FPS. That genuinely would be the deciding factor. Now, sure, a lot of you may say, well, you can do the same thing on PC, but still the thing is knowing how Rockstar operates and how they like to release their games, it is doubtful that we will see Grand Theft Auto 6 coming out anytime soon on PC, perhaps maybe a year to two years, a waiting time that will be necessary. And we do not know anything related towards the next gen upgrade for the Xbox. Now, there are some rumors that Xbox may go into completely new generation in 2026, and they may completely skip on the Pro variant on their consoles. We do not know, of course, which direction that they will want to go for, but if they will do this and release their big console of the next generation console, right, in 2026, they will miss out on big time because the Grand Theft Auto 6 is a significant game that you need to be releasing all your bells and whistles and PlayStation is doing just that. And I think they may actually win this whole competition. Now, even though they are winning in terms of the marketing and in terms of the sales and the revenue, but still there is a chance that Xbox could, could turn things around. Nevertheless, it still is important to have a competition for Sony for PlayStation. If Sony is always number one all the time and Xbox is not number three at this case because Nintendo is being number two, well, it just means that PlayStation is going to get ignorant and it's going to be far more anti-consumer. And because I'm a PlayStation fan, I would rather see PlayStation having a better competition. This means it's better value for consumers. But nevertheless, that's just my own thoughts. Tell me down in the comments as well. What do, you, what do you think about all this information related to PlayStation 5 Pro? I'm genuinely am curious and interested. And yes, I definitely will be picking it up on day one. 
Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, see you guys all and have a wonderful day.